As a community of faith, we worship the triune God. We are called to love and serve all of God's people and create us through glory and need. Let us be your hearts. I invite you to please stand as you're able. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, O God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drunk forever. You opened the gates of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. love what you command, desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
We met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. Excuse me, fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in the house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord.
a reading from Revelation. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift, and the one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to the Lord. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Christ. Please be seated. So during announcement, I forget to make an announcement, and that is, I forget to thank all those who have participated in our parade yesterday. So I want to shout out to those who have helped on the decorating our, our float and participate, giving out uh, the brochures and candies. And I, that was one of my high because I really enjoyed it. I was able to sit in the, in ways caravan there and uh, throw some candies, but it was a great time for, for me and I hope the rest who have participated um, felt that way too. So thank you for those who have participated in that. So I was struggling with uh, to find a light side story this morning, but this happened to be the one I found. Um, it says, thanks a lot, Lord. It goes like this. Little Anna's father drove the family home from church. After washing their hands, Hannah and her father sat at the table. Anna's mother brought heaping a place of dinner and set them in front of the girl and her daddy. As he always did, Anna's father grumbled about the meal, then asked the blessing. Looking confused, little Anna asked, Daddy, does God hear us when we pray? Why, of course, Anna, he replied. He hears us every time we pray. And does he hear everything we say the rest of the time? Yes, every word he answered, encouraged that he had inspired his daughter to be curious about spiritual matters. Innocently, she burst his bubble with her next question. Then, which does God believe? 
seen, but you don't have that, so. <laughs> Got work to do here, one week off, and yeah. So for my prayer this morning, I'll, I'll like to chant this. I'm quite sure some of you know, or maybe all of you know this, but uh, sing along with me. This is our prayer for this morning. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one very restore. And in all we are Christians. unto you, a rock and a redeemer. Amen. So, if I was to ask you this morning, tell me something that Jesus did for you. Tell me something that Jesus did for you. I'm quite sure you will probably say that Jesus died for you, right? Jesus died for you, Amen. for our sins. And through his death and resurrection, he has granted us salvation and eternal life. Would that be kind of your answer? I'll say you correct if you answer that. But here's another thing I believe that Jesus did and many may not know or remember. And that is, Jesus prayed for his disciples and all who will become his followers. For those in his presence and for those who will later become his disciples. My dear friends, even before we were born, Jesus has been praying for us. On his last night with the disciples, you, remember, you may remember Jesus had just shared a meal with his disciples. He humbly washed their feet. He gave them the commandment to love each other. He had answered some questions about his leaving them. And after all of that, here we now find Jesus begins to pray. In our gospel reading for this morning we find what is called the priestly prayer of Jesus. Now it is called the priestly prayer of Jesus because like the priest, you see, Jesus intercedes for his disciples and offer prayer to the Father. And in this prayer of prayer, Jesus prays for the unity, for the unity of all of his followers, both present and future. I ask not on behalf of these, Jesus prays, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, Jesus prays, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And so here, my dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus' prayers, he is not only praying that his disciples and followers live in unity and be as one as he and the Father is one, 
but he also tells us the purpose and the reason for praying for this unity among believers. The glory that you have given me, Jesus prays, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me even as you have loved as you have loved them even though you have loved me and so there you have it my dear friends the purpose of Jesus' prayer is unity and not unity for its own sake but mind you for the sake of witness to the love of God and the reality and truthfulness of Christ as the one sent, as the one true and promised Messiah. A fourth century bishop says this, paraphrasing Jesus' prayer. He says, if disciples would keep the peace among themselves that they had learned from him, Jesus, the people around them will know the teacher by his disciples. On the other hand, he says, quoting here, the quarrelsome of those same disciples would cause others to deny that they are the disciples of a God of peace and will not allow that Jesus, not being peaceable, have been sent by God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we know as disciples of Christ, when we are in unity with one another, our unity will surely allow the world to see the peaceable love of Jesus. The good news for us this morning is 2,000 years ago, faced with impeding suffering and death on the cross, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, nevertheless turns his, nevertheless turns his attention to us actually praying for us. In fact, Jesus prays for all of those in every time and places, for those who will come later to believe through the testimony of his disciples. That includes us this morning. Yes, Jesus prays for our ups and downs, our hopes and disappointments, our aspirations and commitment, our yearning for meaning and need for a purpose, for our unity, for our peace, and for our love. Right there, right then, right here, right now, Jesus continues to pray, to care for us, to support us, to love us, and value us as beloved children of God. But here's the thing. This prayer from Jesus, you see, is both a gift and a call. And not only for our sake, as Jesus reminds us in our prayer, but for the sake of the world. As we pray, we are indeed one in Christ, one in mission, one in self-given love of God for the world. My prayer this morning is may God continue to answer Jesus' prayer that we will all grow in being in the same mind, having the same love. And may the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus as we continue to live in unity, witnessing to the amazing love of God in Christ Jesus through our words and deeds. Indeed, they will know we are Christian by our love. Amen. Amen.
faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I live in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry, especially Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartelson, Lynn Lepo, Marty Danielson, David Erdman, Elizabeth Rhinus, Don Farnham, Jim Rhinus, Denise Robinson, Judy Lamb, Jeff Paulson, Pat Gallagher, Dee Grover, Anne-Marie Winter, Reverend Carl Homan, Peg Manro, Rich Mulder, Mike Dunn, Bob Winkler, Catherine Panalunas, all teachers and children, and all the families of Texas, and all those we name aloud are in our hearts now. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the family of God in Buckingham and Pastor Joe Wright. Lord, you need to know their needs and wants. Protect and guide them always. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day, we pray for all of those servicemen and women who sacrificed their lives for our country's safety and freedom. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, as we are reminded, we know you pray for us and continue to pray for us. Help us to be mindful that you petition as the high priest. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we bring before you uh, the family of Pastor Susan Lynch, who had passed away of this past party. We ask for God that you will be with them in the days ahead and comfort them with your presence and assurance of the resurrection. God, in your mercy. We ask for God that you will unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-given spirit to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. No. 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 Let's take a moment to share the Lord's peace with each other. Lord's peace. Peace be with you. Just a just a, a quick reminder, there is a poster that reminds us of all of our, 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 
all of the officers who have given their life and sacrifice are and so spend a moment to take a look as you're exiting the worship space this morning. And thank you, Denise, for putting that together, right? Yeah. As always, we are mindful of your gifts as you continue to support us through the ministries at Redeemer here. We ask that you will kindly, if you so desire, place your offering at the back of the offering plate, which is on the back of the on the table. Also, there's an opportunity for those who are worshiping online and us here too uh, to give online. We do have this. I always get confused of what we call this. Uh, what is the scanner, Mike? What's what's called? QR code. QR code. Please do if you so desire. You have that opportunity to for that. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. In my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but thy the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwell with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thank you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.